Good morning. Today I'm going to be reading from 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21, and then 2 Corinthians 6, 1 to 2. Um, because when, when the scriptures were originally written, they weren't in chapters and verses like we have today. And it's just this was just all one letter. Um, and the, the beginning verses of the chapter 6 fit with uh, the ending verses of chapter 5, okay? A lot of those divisions don't make sense. <laughs> Sometimes they put verse numbers right in the middle of a sentence, you know, but it helps us to be able to find scriptures uh, to have the, to have those, so I'm very thankful for them. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21 ESV. <clears throat> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then, and this is chapter 6, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I helped you Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now, this was written to the church in Corinth. Now, um, the church is the body of Christ. It's a body of believers in Jesus Christ. Um, uh, <clears throat> and in this case, in, in, the, in the Bible, uh, they were, it was the body of Christ in in a, in a city, you know, basically, so like the whole city of Corinth, and so they didn't, probably didn't meet all in one location, because they didn't have big buildings back then, you know, they met in um, people's houses, or uh, wherever, you know, they could find places to, to gather, uh, to, to meet together, um, okay, so, so th th these words are spoken to those who are professing faith in Jesus Christ. Um, so then he says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Now, we need to pay attention to the if words. That if word, if word is, um, is, is it very critical and important for us to understand uh, what these passages are saying. For it's not assuming that they were all in Christ, you know, just like is the church gathers together today, not everybody professing faith in Jesus Christ is truly in Christ. You know, there's a lot of false professions of faith in Jesus Christ. So, so he's not assuming that they're all in Christ, and probably because there were some behavioral issues uh, that he was addressing from what I could, you know, gather from reading the, uh, going through the, the whole letter. Um, that um, and I and I think it's a, a second yeah it's a second letter, so it's kind of a follow up to the first letter uh, where he was dealing with sexual immorality and all kinds of uh, types of things uh, that were going on in in this in this church um, which appeared to be uh, fairly worldly and uh, caught up into the the culture of the day and so. Anyway, so if anyone is in Christ, meaning that if, you know, uh, that means uh, the, the word if is used to, to uh, suggest basically that uh, if, if this is true, then this should result from it. So, so if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. It is not saying that everybody who professes Faith in Jesus Christ is a new creation. Only if we're in Christ, and then we have to go back to a whole bunch of other scriptures 
that describe for us what it means to be in Christ. Like in Romans 8, you know, it talks about in Christ are those who have um, uh, no longer walking according to the flesh, but they're walking according to the spirit. Um, and that's what it means to be in Christ. So when it says he's a new creation, the old has passed away, behold, the new has come. That again, this is not automatic for everybody who makes a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. This is talking about those who have truly um, died with Christ to sin, been raised with him to walk in newness of life in him. And they're walking now according to the spirit and they're not walking according to the flesh. For if we walk according to the flesh, we're going to die in our sins and we're not going to inherit eternal life with God. So, and then it says, all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled him to himself. Um, and that's true, you know, that we can't even come to faith in Jesus Christ unless God the Father first draws us to Christ, unless he persuades us as to his holiness and righteousness and of our sinfulness and of our need to come to, to, to faith in Jesus Christ. And the faith that, that it requires for us to, to believe in Jesus, it is not of ourselves, you know, it's, it's not of our own doing. It is a, a gift, gifted to us by God. You can read that in Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. Uh, so so God, God is the one who initiates uh, our salvation. Um, but we have, to, we have to respond to that, um, that initiation uh, by surrendering our lives to Jesus Christ, by walking in obedience to him. No longer according to the flesh, but now according to the spirit. Um, so, so if we, if we're truly in Christ, the, the old the old life, oh, the whole old life of sin should be gone, and now we should be walking in in holiness and righteousness and obedience to our Lord. So that's what it's talking about. You know, it's not saying it's automatic. It, it uh, just because we make a profession of faith. Okay. So I, I want to get down to um, this this part here. Uh, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Now that reconciliation comes from God, uh, he's, he's the one who reconciles us to, to himself. But we we have to respond to that. You know, we, we have to we have to be reconciled to him. In other in other words, uh, none of us are forced into being Christians. None of us are forced into following Jesus Christ with our lives. Uh, you know, Jesus uh, initiates it, you know, and, and, the, and he provides the faith for us to believe. But we, we have to put on that faith. You know, we have to accept it. We have to apply it to our lives. Um, so when this says that, it's telling them they need to be reconciled to God. The, the point is that they weren't all reconciled to God. Um, for, for Jesus, who knew no sin, uh, died on that cross, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And that is not a status that is, you know, actually walking in his righteousness and holiness. Now, reconciled means to decisively change. It means to change to the same position as God with regard to sin and righteousness. It means we change from being God's enemies to now being his friends. We change by dying with Christ to sin and living to his righteousness and no longer in sin. And that's what this is talking about. The old has passed away. The new has come. If we are truly in Christ. And in Christ means we are no longer walking according to the flesh, but we're now walking according to the Spirit. And then when we go down in, in, to the two first uh, verses in chapter 6, it talks about, <clears throat> so we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So he's talking to people professing faith in Jesus Christ who are part of the gatherings of the church. And he's letting them know they need to be reconciled to God. Um, and he's letting them know that now is the, the day of salvation. Now they need to, to come to true salvation. 
Uh, because it says, we appeal to you to not receive the grace of God in vain. And a vain means it's futile, useless, ineffective. There are people today, and a lot of them are receiving a false grace. Um, and, and that could be what, what is happening here. Or they could have received it, you know, intellectually or emotionally. Whatever, whatever took place, the point is that for a lot of them, it was useless and ineffective because they didn't apply it to their lives. For, <clears throat> for God's grace, which is bringing us salvation, trains us to say no to ungodliness and fleshly lusts and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives while we wait for Christ's return. And that's in Titus 2, 11 to 14. So God's grace is not just forgiveness of sin so we can go to heaven when we die. God's grace delivers us from our slavery to sin, our bondage to sin. God's grace changes us, like this is talking about the reconciliation, changes us to where the old is gone and the new has come. That means that we have died with Christ to sin and now we're walking with him in righteousness and holiness to the glory of God and in the power of God. Um, so that this is the encouragement today. Make sure that you have genuine salvation. Make sure that you have not received God's grace in vain. Make sure that you are truly reconciled with God, which <clears throat> you have a part in that. You have a part in your salvation, uh, not, not trying to earn or deserve your own salvation in your own flesh, but in, in, in heart and love response to what Jesus did for us. We need to be reconciled to God, and we need to not receive his grace in vain. Okay, that's the encouragement for today.